I think everybody is familiar with ornamental crab apples, many of which are not native to North America. But did you know there are three species of crab apple that are native to the eastern United States and even parts of Canada? Today I'm going to tell you about these three native crab apples, what critters and pollinators use them, and some tips for choosing planting stock and growing them. I'm going to save a very important growing tip for towards the end of the video, so be sure to stick around for that. Let's get into these awesome native crab apples. First up is the southern crab apple, Mollus angustifolia. As its name suggests, this species is found mainly in the southeastern United States. It can grow to 20 to 30 feet tall with up to a 20 foot spread, but it is often smaller. While it will sucker to form a thicket if allowed, it is easily grown as a specimen tree. The white to pink blooms appear from February to May depending on location. The sour 3 quarter inch to 1 inch gold to yellow fruits ripen in August and September. Southern crab apple prefers to grow in moist but well drained soils and in full sun to partial shade. In areas with mild winters, southern crab apple may remain semi evergreen in winter. Southern crab apple is often called narrow leaf crab apple due to some of its leaves being slender. If you love native fruit trees, be sure to pollinate that like button. The wildlife and pollinator value of the native crab apples is very high. The fragrant flowers are attracted to a variety of native bees of all sizes, butterflies and skippers. They are host plants for at least 60 species of moths and butterflies, including the striped hair streak, the promethea moth, the cecropia moth, and several species of sphinx moths. If you are wanting to provide food for caterpillars, a native crab apple is an excellent choice. Of course, all of those caterpillars draw in the songbirds. Even during the winter months, the crab apple will provide food to songbirds as many species such as the white-throated sparrow will feed on the buds. The fruits are often eaten by woodpeckers, mockingbirds, and orioles. The fruit is also a hit with just about every type of mammal. Critters from deer mice to black bears feed on the fruit. If a crab apple is dropping fruit, you can be assured any deer in the area will be feasting on them. Just be aware that deer also like crab apple leaves and twigs, and rabbits like the bark, so protect young trees accordingly. If you have ever had to deal with deer wrecking newly planted trees, let us know about it in the comments. To ensure fruit production, it is a good idea to plant at least two crab apples, as many are self-sterile and need a cross-pollinator. Not only do the native crab apples provide food, but they also provide cover. Their dense and twiggy branching provides excellent nesting cover for songbirds. If planted in a wilder setting and allowed to form a thicket, they can also provide cover for mammals such as deer and rabbits, and also for ground nesting birds like northern bobwhite and wild turkey. As you can see, the native crab apples are an excellent choice when it comes to wildlife and pollinators. On to the next species. Next up is the sweet crab apple, Mollus coronaria, a tree that can grow up to 15 to 30 feet tall with a 20 to foot spread and it is found over much of the eastern U.S. and even parts of Canada. It is named for the sweet smell of its blooms and the white to pink flowers appear from April to June, again depending on location. Likewise, it has later ripening fruit in the sour 3 quarter inch to 1 and a half inch green to yellow gold, sometimes with a red blush, fruits are ripe in September to October. It also prefers to grow in full sun to partial shade and in moist, well-drained soils. When I am discussing these native crab apples, I'm referring to the wild types of them and not cultivars. While there are several cultivars of the native crab apples that have been developed for the landscaping industry, when it comes to wildlife and pollinators, it's always best to stick with the wild type. Anything that's a cultivar has usually been chosen for traits that make them more acceptable for the general landscaping trade and not things that make them more acceptable for wildlife and pollinators. Also, if possible, select stock that has been grown from seed from your local area, what is known in the native plant world as a local ecotype. These plants will be best suited for the conditions where you live and should bloom and set fruit well. When it comes to native plants, local is always best. The prairie crab apple, Mollus eonensis, is the smallest species on this list and grows 10 to 20 feet tall with an equal spread. As its name suggests, it is a species of the prairies and areas that have similar soils. It blooms in the spring and its pink to white flowers appear from April to June, depending on location. The small three quarter to one and a quarter inch sour green to yellow fruits are ripe from August to September. It will grow in full sun to partial shade, but prefers full sun. Prairie crab apple will grow in moist, well-drained soils, although it does better in drier soils than the other native crab apples. This is also the native crab apple with the most tendency to root sucker. 
All native crab apples can form thickets from suckers. Under normal conditions, these suckers are easily controlled by mowing or clipping them. They generally do not send up many suckers unless they are subjected to a disturbance such as storm damage, cutting, or fire. This can be used to your advantage on larger properties as a prescribed burn will get a heavy sucker response from native crab apples and create dense cover thickets. Like all species of apples, the native crab apples are prone to many diseases and pests. When it comes to the insect pest, I don't worry about them. The birds eat many of them, as do many beneficial insects. The best way to prevent disease on the native crab apples is to plant them where they will get a good amount of sunlight and have decent airflow around them. In other words, don't crowd them. Give them some space and they should live a long life. One disease that all the native crab apples are susceptible to is cedar apple rust. As the name implies, this fungal disease requires two hosts to complete its life cycle, the eastern red cedar and an apple. To prevent your crab apples from getting cedar apple rust, plant them at least 500 feet away from any eastern red cedars. This can be super tough in some parts of the southeast, but do the best you can. If you would like to learn about another native fruit tree that is a big hit with pollinators and wildlife, check out this video and be sure to get out and explore nature in your backyard.